podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. Chances are, when you think about tobacco, you automatically think of cigarettes. But scientists have recently discovered another use for the plant, one with positive health implications, vaccine production. In the next installment of our North Carolina Rising series, Christine Rogers tells us how, with the help of biotechnology, tobacco is finding a new purpose in North Carolina. It's no secret, historically, tobacco has played an important role in North Carolina's economy. While the number of farms has declined over the past several years, the Tar Heel State remains the number one tobacco producer in the country. But there is a new strain of Australian tobacco coming to the state, one you won't find in a field, but in a greenhouse. What we have here is a, in total a 97,000 square foot facility. 27,000 square feet of that is this greenhouse space we're in front of right now. And uh, this will be used to grow our tobacco, which is the biomass we use to ultimately uh, generate our product, which is a, a influenza vaccine. Medicago, a Canadian-based biotechnology firm, is building this $42 million vaccine facility in Durham. This is our foray into the U.S. marketplace. The facility we're building here is uh, in collaboration with DARPA, a part of the U.S. Defense Agency. Um, and for Medicago U.S., it represents our entree into the influenza market. So this will be a vaccine production facility capable of producing uh, up to 10 million doses of vaccine in a given month. What this facility hopes to avoid is the delays in producing vaccines that was experienced during the 2009 H1N1 influenza outbreak. Flu vaccines are typically grown in chicken eggs, a process that is often slow and expensive. If we talk about something that's a traditional egg-based vaccine, um, there, there's a long lead time. You have to have flocks ready, so you have to start six months early to have your chickens ready to go. With this new process, scientists isolate a protein from the flu virus that triggers a protective immune response in patients. They implant the gene for this protein into bacteria and then infect a tobacco plant with the bacteria. The gene is incorporated into the plant, directing it to produce the flu proteins. The proteins are then extracted from the plant and purified into a vaccine. It's a beautiful system for a vaccine because it, it looks a lot like a regular virus. So when, it, when we give the vaccine to people, um, their body thinks it's a virus and it responds very well. It, it produces a good immune response and so you get good protection against that. It improves the quality of vaccine that's available and then responding to a pandemic situation where we would need 350 million doses as quickly as possible it gives us an opportunity to do that. From the time we uh, sequence the DNA for the particular strain, uh, we can be in production uh, very rapidly and have product available in approximately 60 days. Medicago in Latin means alfalfa, a plant the company used to use when working with what it calls VLPs, or virus-like particles. VLPs mimic the native structure of a virus, allowing them to be recognized by the immune system. But unlike viruses, they lack the core genetic material, making them non-infectious and unable to replicate. What Medicago discovered are VLPs actually expand better in the porous tobacco leaf. Tobacco plants are also very hardy. They grow fast. It's a very robust plant and easy to work with. So that was why the switch was made. With this process, tobacco plants germinated from seed can be ready within just five weeks. And unlike its plant in Quebec, this production facility in North Carolina will be fully automated. Robotics and automation will move the plants throughout that greenhouse and a human won't even have to touch them at that point, although they'll be monitored by humans to make sure that they're okay. When you're someday able to deliver 100 million, 200 million doses in a very brief amount of time and supply a very real demand, that's uh, very energizing, I think. While this process is geared for flu vaccines, researchers say the tobacco plant offers limitless possibilities for a variety of other vaccines. 
you could envision this as working with any protein that, that you'd want to use. So we happen to choose the protein that's on the outside surface of the flu. So H1, the hemagglutinin protein, is what we're currently working. But any protein you can imagine um, would work in this. It's a great engineering and science challenge. And um, to me, it, we can really make a difference in health of, of people, um, not only in the U.S., but the, the technology can be very mobile. It will be much easier to drop a facility like this anywhere in the world because it's really contained. It can really make a difference in people's health. Metacago says it decided to build its new facility in North Carolina because of the high quality workforce with biotechnology experience. The facility expects to hire nearly 80 employees. The production facility should be fully operational by summer. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.